So we're gonna talk about MySQL user security. And what this basically means is we're gonna talk about how to create users in MySQL for use with your databases. So I am in a CentOS server. I'm using MariahDB. That's just because I conveniently had the server up and running. But this is basically gonna work for any MySQL, any MariahDB, probably any Persona database. Really, I'm just concentrating on MySQL stuff. So creating users in MySQL really give us three powers, three things we can do. One, we can define what database and tables the users can see and operate on. Two, we define what operations the user can do on those databases and tables. And three, we can actually define from where a user is able to connect. So we're gonna go over those three things. First, I'm just gonna make a quick database for us to work with. I'm just gonna create a database, my app. I'm gonna give it a UTF-8 MB4 character set, which is a good default to use on MySQL. UTF-8 is great. UTF-8 MB4 is a little better on MySQL because it's a more complete set of the UTF-8 character set. So I have the database. That's really all we need for this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick table too, because why not? And this is a copy of a database used in an application I have. And it doesn't really matter. It's just a user's database table. We have an ID, an email, password, a name, a role, other stuff, created that, updated that. That's all great. Defines a primary key, defines a unique key for emails, sets the engine to InnoDB and the character set to UTF-8 once again. I would actually probably do MB4. I am getting a little bit distracted by this. This doesn't matter too much for this video. Oops. No database selected, of course. So actually, let's use my app. And then we'll rerun this long query. And we have now a database, and that database has tables. So I already used that database. Let's see the tables, show tables users. Great. Select star from users. There are none. Let's make a user who can use this database. So we're gonna create a user and we're gonna give that user privileges, permissions to use that database that the user is assigned to. The easiest way to create a user is to create a user who can access the server from anywhere and has all privileges to a database. So we're gonna create a new user. We're gonna call this my user. And here we get to define from what hosts the user can connect from. This wildcard is saying all hosts and then identified by, and you put your password here. And I just have some secure password, which of course is not a secure password. Yours should be. So we have a user. Now we can probably actually see what that creates. So if we select user and host from the MySQL database, which contains kind of all the metadata for MySQL, we'll do mysql.user, I'm sorry, lowercase user, and we can see the users existing in the system. So there was only the root user before, and that root user can only connect from host localhost, or the localhost IP address, or the localhost IPv6 address. Now we just created a new, new user, my user, and that new user can connect from any host. And that's okay in that this user is allowed to do a lot of stuff, and really allowed to do too much. So this isn't the most secure because that user can connect from any hosts. And I'll show you in a little bit how to narrow that down so we can define certain hosts or host ranges. Now we've done two of our three bullet points here. We've said we've created a user who can connect and we've defined from where that user can connect from. Now we want to grant privileges. So I'm actually going to grant all privileges on my app dot star, meaning every table inside of the my app database to my user at wildcard host name. And we actually need to define the full user. So we can see there's multiple root users, but there's three separate users because there's root from IPv4 localhost, there's root from localhost host name, and there's root from IPv6 localhost. And these are three different users. So I have to define when you're defining a user, the user and the host name. So MySQL knows exactly what user we're talking about here. So I'm granting all privileges to my app every table to the user we just created. If we wanted to, I could exit and I could MySQL and I can log in. So MySQL dash U, it was my user dash P. The password I used was just some secure password and I'm in. So we can do show databases and see, whoops, plural, and see, well, I can see my information schema and my app. Now compare that to the root user we can see everything, performance schema, information schema, my app, and the MySQL meta table, which let us see the users existing. So we have this user, and this is not very secure. We've given this user all permissions, all grants on that database table, and we've said that user can connect from any host. So let's see some host restrictions. Now I'm actually going to drop this user, my user, at 
and I'll do this in quotes. Let's see if that's true. All right, great. So I've drafted that user, which is great. That user is now gone. I can flush privileges just to make sure that my SQL, which saves privilege information in memory, knows to flush those privileges and reload them. Now let's create this user in a few different ways to see what host restrictions we can use. So if I recreate this user, I can say a host name, in fact, so serviceforhackers.com. I can create a user that can only connect from the serviceforhackers.com domain. And this will resolve that IP address and it knows what domain serviceforhackers.com is because that's a real domain. So I'm basically saying this user can only connect from my serviceforhackers.com web server. We can select users again and see serviceforhackers.com hostname for my user. That's good because the domain name can change, the IP address that the domain name points to can change, so that's kind of a little bit more portable. However, the serviceforhackers.com IP address is a public IP address, and we might actually be using MySQL and our application server behind a private network that has a separate IP address. That means serviceforhackers.com might not resolve to the right, correct IP address for this user. And we can start doing IP address-based hostnames as well. First, I'm just going to show you one other thing. We can do wildcards in domains. So I can do wildcard.serviceforhackers.com so that my user can connect from any subdomain of serviceforhackers.com as well. So if I create those two users, we can see that those exists in the user host here. I'm just gonna drop those users real quick. Then we'll drop the other user. And we can flush privileges. So if we reselect everything here, We'll see, we're just back to our root users. Great. The other thing you can do is give an IP address specifically. So we have an IP address from which the my user can connect from. Now this is good if your office might have a static IP address that doesn't change, or if you are connecting from another server that behind a private IP address, a private network, where you don't really have a host name used to point to those IP addresses. This is typically what I do. And you can just do any IP address here. So something on a private network or public network, any IP address. So typically if it's on a private IP address, you might have an address like 192.168.1.25 or 23 or whatever. You might have some 10.10. something addresses. You might have some 172 addresses or even 127 addresses. Any private network IP address here is the most typical. And that's usually because MySQL and your application servers are behind the same network in the same data center, but not always. So this could be any IP address. So we can do the IP address 192.168.1 and a wildcard. And this wildcard is giving us a range of IP addresses that will be allowed for this my user. So this is good because we have a subnet here. So we have multiple servers and those servers all have a private network that they're connected to, and that network is a 192.168.1 address, then any MySQL client from those servers are gonna be able to connect to this via this user. So this has given us a range of IP addresses between 192.168.1.1 through 192.168.1.254. And actually in this range is 255, but that's typically a reserved IP address. And there's that zero, and that's also a reserved IP address. So the effective IP addresses from which we can connect are going to be 192.168.11 through 1 1.254. Of course, that's an invalid query, so I want to clear it out. Let's see our users now. And we can see that my user exists here, 192.168.1 wildcard. So we have that subnet there. So now that we have covered a bunch of stuff on from where a user can connect to, let's talk about the grants you can do. So before I granted all privileges to a user, but we can get a little more specific on that. I'm just gonna select our users here so we can see. So before I granted all privileges for a user, this time we'll just grant a few. So maybe I'll do, well, just some stuff for a read only user. So I'm gonna do grant create view, select and show view on my app was the name of the database, all tables to my user, and the only user we have with that name right now is the one defined with this host. So now we can actually do show grants for that user as well. And we can see that this user has usage, which is basically no grants, but can see the database. And then we can see the actual grants it has, select, create view, show view, which are basically just read-only type grants. 
Now the next thing we can do is give this user more grants. This is what I call the 90% use case grant, where it does most of the stuff we usually do and not really anymore. So I'm gonna grant alter, create, delete, drop, index, insert, lock tables, select, update to the same database, all tables, to my user, the same user. And we can see the grants for that will be updated for that user. This is a 90% use case. You can define more or less if you want. I'll link to the MySQL documentation that shows every grant possible because there's stuff like creating views and dropping views and dropping databases. But this is a great way to secure how the users connecting to your database can do. In other words, how much power they have. So for instance, you might have a user that can connect from localhost only that has all privileges. And you, then you might have a user that can only connect from a third party vendor's IP address who can only do read only operations. Lastly, after making changes, you always want to flush privileges because privileges and things like grants and users are saved in memory in MySQL and flush privileges will get rid of those out of the memory and reload them.